Hi guys, James from DBG here with another book review. This is the second book that was sent to us by the lovely people at Cavalier Books. And as you can see, this is a painting guidebook, specifically for World War I 28mm in the Middle East theatres. Now, um, it, a lot of people assume that because of well, the importance and the level of coverage and media and books and what have you about the First World War that the Western Front is pretty much it. But no, it's called the First World War for a reason because it happened everywhere. And one of the major places was actually in the Middle East um, because the British had to protect his empire and its protectorate, which was Egypt at the time, and also had to protect the oil um, and also the Ottoman Empire, which was part of the Central Powers, had a major base. What well, was its major base of operations? Obviously, the Ottoman Empire is based in Turkey and everything around that. So, um, the Middle East was very, very important. Um, um, and this is actually a really interesting book. Um, this is literally a, um, a painting book, so it's basically lots of pictures of step-by-step -step guides of painting British, Dominion and Indian troops in that period. So, without further ado, let's have a quick look. Um, ooh. Sorry, I, even reading this book, I, I didn't read the inside of the page. There's lots of um, interesting, anyway. Sorry, easily distracted. So, Soldiers of the British Empire, 1914 to 1920. Because um, this equipment pretty much stayed around until probably the early 1930s. So, as the Middle Eastern theatres, which is Egypt, the Western Desert, Sinai, Palestine, Transjordan, Syria, and Mesopotamia. Introduction. And it literally just tells you what it is. It's a step-by-step -step guide of how to paint these miniatures. Um, there's a first one miniature with a woodbine designs, um, British gas hood. And there is a Um, a truck, who did it say was a buyer? No, it doesn't tell you who the truck's by. And this is the guy's setup. And then he explains in here that he uses Vallejo um, acrylic paints, but also by War, War Games Foundry, Code the Arms, and Scale 75. And Andrea. Then he gives you a usual guide here that of separating your brushes. So one pile um, is synthetic brushes for just quick um, slapping of colour or dry brushing or stuff like that. And there's another colour, a set of dice, a set of dice, a set of brushes for detail work, another set of brushes for varnishes, another set of brushes for putting base coats on. So we start off with heads, hands, and helmets, and he uses. Um, stuff like that. It says VGC. That's Vallejo game color because Vallejo has many different types of of paints. Uh, there's air, and um, there's model color, there's game color. So let's see Vallejo model color. So and this is basically a really quick guide for how to paint. Um, European faces. So you go step by step. So base coat, wash, first highlight, second highlight. Pretty much the way I do it, but I use um, scissor paints. This is how to do Indian faces. Uh, pretty much the same way, except for kin the skin tone changes. Then we on to helmets. This is a Wolseley helmet used by the uh, British and Dominion forces in that theatre. Um, you'll probably think of it as a pith helmet, but no, it's a horsey helmet. There we have the Brody helmet with a um, khaki cloth or neck cover. And it just gives you painting insignia and stuff like that. Then we have khaki uniform and equipment. Now, khaki uniform. Um, there's many different shades of it. 
and it's really hard to get a really nice colour for khaki. I use, what do I use? I use the Vel, actually they have a colour called khaki which is very good. Another colour I would use would be Talon Sand, which is also very good. And you'd highlight that with Xandra Dust. Anyway, again, so look. Um, Vileho model colour, khaki grey. And highlight with pale sand. So again, this is a really good step-by-step -step guide. So you've got khaki surge, uh, which is more the colour was used by the British forces on the Western Front. So it's a much browner khaki, or much greener grey khaki. So look, Vileho model colour, English uniform which is what Flames will use for their British troops. So, anyway, sports jackets and flannels, Indian khaki again, which is slightly lighter, webbing and equipment. This is amazing, amazing step-by-step -step guide. Really in-depth. Right, now we're on to unit insignias and equipment and stuff like that. Infantry support weapons, uh, you've got, I think that's, um, what is it? Oh, Toffee Apple Mortar, Stokes Mortar, Vickers Machine Gun Teams, Limbers, etc, etc. There is a bit in here for painting horses, but um, that's a little further on. I want to about varnishing now. This is quite important. Um, it's made himself a spray booth there uh, to basically capture everything without it flying around in the wind. And this is very cool. These here, these top tips. These are out, these are throughout the book. Like for instance, my shake varnishes. Um, and this basing one is really cool because you actually don't have to paint. Um, the sand, which is what I do, which is what loads of people do. And this will please Reichart because he doesn't paint his sand and it winds Chris and me up massively. Um, yeah, so you, you've got yourself three pots of different coarseness of sand and gravel. First one is quite rocky, second one um, less rocky but more colour, and there's a fine sand. And you do your tufts, and that's what it looks like. So these bases. They weren't painted because normally I sand, paint, dry brush one or two colours, then add your static flock or grit or tufts. And then an example of all the first models I've been working on. Mounted units. This would be things like your, your famous Australian light horse. going on and how to get a nice chestnut brown horse and we're getting very close I mean, this, this guy goes into immense amounts of details part of the reason why I paint so quickly is I use washes and I use um, quite a few highlights quickly done and there we go there's the finished mini miniatures um, it's interesting to see that he hasn't painted the eyes. A lot of people don't paint eyes. I'd, I paint eyes. I don't know why, because it's really fiddly, but I've always painted eyes. So here's Yeomanry, which is um, a different type of uniform. And again, they've got the Wolsey helmets, flat cap with um, neck protectors as well. And this is basically the book. This is, oh, there's your Australian light horse. World famous from Bathsheba. So I'm just going to, there's lots of wonderful, wonderful pictures in here. It's really just worth flipping through. Ah, horse colours. This is very interesting. I forgot this was in here. So yeah, 
This gives you the colors you need for gray horses, brown horses, and black horses. The highlights, middle shades, etc. Now we're on to insignia markings, um, which are 28 millimeters, quite easy to freehand. And then there's some examples. You can see patches, there's, there's a corporal, patches on the side of the helmets, and the uh, unit markings on the sleeve. Camels, the camel core. Camel Corps were pivotal in um, in that in that theatre, obviously, because camels live in that theatre. Again, there's 25 stages of painting that camel. And there's some examples of completed Camel Corps miniatures. Those ones are very cool. And now we're on to guns and gunners. That's the uh, standard British 18 pounder field piece. We've got the carcass surge on there. There's ones in the lighter khaki and undershirt. And the heavier pieces just over here. This one's a 60 pounder field gun. And at the bottom there, you've got the um, horse-drawn limber. Yeah. So this is an interesting example of um, the type of camouflage that was used throughout the First World War. Everything started out being a bit green, then they realised this dazzle camo that they also put on them battleships which made them incredibly hard to spot and see. Totally distorted their outline. Again, there's lots of these lovely finished pieces. Gun crews. This book is incredibly well laid out. And there's some... Uh, Pictures of um, shirtless gun crew. Motor vehicles. Ah, the Rolls Royce armoured car. Now, where's this kit from? Empress Miniatures. Empress Miniatures is actually really good. I do recommend checking out their website. They have a vast collection of historical miniatures from many periods. Um, they've just done some Vietnam stuff and some late war British stuff. I know that's got nothing to do with this. But um, just thought I'd mention the Vietnam and late war British. And um, this is pretty much just the way I'd do it. You build it, undercoat it, base coat it one colour, go and do your washes, go and do your highlights, go and do your second lot of highlights. And he's actually um, painted the tyres and headlights grey as an undercoat. And the free-handed numbers and things. There's a the finished piece. I've got some more. There's a armoured car troop at the top. Rolls Royce Tender. That's an example of a Matchbox 152 scale Model T Ford. Converted about to make it look like a supply truck. And then we have. I think it's the one we saw at the beginning, sort of an armoured truck. It looks like it's got a Lewis gun on the front. Yeah, I mean, I realise I am flicking through this whole book, but the pictures and stuff like that is very cool, very cool. There's a couple of Mark 4s, another Mark 5s, another Mark 1s. Yeah, there's male, male and female. Um, if you didn't know, uh, the British, 
uh, split their tanks up into male and female. Male had six pounder gun sponsors, and female had either Vickers, Hotchkiss, or Lewis gun sponsors. Um, and in trench warfare, the females were far uh, more prized because they just roll up to a trench. At that point in the war, the Germans didn't have much to um, take them on other than field artillery or a lucky shot pinging through one of the vision slits. And these machine guns would just hose down either side of the trenches. The Germans just didn't know what to do until they did. Another sort of staff car. We've got signals. This one's this bit is called dressing the table. So little vignettes and groups of miniatures. There's a command, again using all the techniques, the classic British officer of the period with his walking cane and his bushy moustache and binoculars. Another standing at ease with his Brodie helmet. The other way I can't recommend how good these pictures are and these miniatures from a period of a very famous war that not a lot of people know about. There's a motorcycle dispatch rider, the first aid, little vignettes there, doctors, wounded soldiers. It's all amazing though. The ambulances. There's some observers, artillery observers and signals. Radio, it's a radio truck with this Lewis gun. And now I think we're coming towards the end. Appendix, converting figures. Um, it's quite, this is a very useful bit. Um, showing all the equipment you need. So you've got yourself a file, a scalpel, a pin vise, a pair of clippers and glue. It's going through, showing you what to do for a simple head swap. Then there's stuff about green stuff. Again, it's one of those top tips. Um, I was, again, I totally agree with when you're doing green stuff, always keep your working surface slightly damp, your fingers slightly damp, and any tools you're working through are damp as well because it will stick to you and you won't get the effect you want. So yeah, about working with green stuff, bed rolls, head swaps, that sort of thing, turbans, spine protectors, which is very handy. So this is bed rolls and what have you. Green stuff armbands and what have you. And then the washes. I think this is um, how to make your own washes, which is very handy. Yeah, how to make your own washes, which is probably a hell of a lot cheaper than buying from going to workshop or Vallejo or Army Painter or whatever. And then we've got use of contacts at the end there. How to, um, like I said, Gripping Beasts, Brigade Games, Empress Miniatures, Foot Saw. Great War Miniatures, like, yeah, all glory. First call, Northern World, yeah. That's the nice vehicles. So yeah, all in all, this is a very useful book for the period. Obviously, if you're not doing this period, it's not. But the hints and tips in here of painting British and Dominion troops of that period, even a little bit into the Second World War, not too far, beginning of the Second World War, 39, 40. Very handy because the Rolls Royce armor car was still used in the Second World War, but still had some horses, still had camels. Maybe. So, yeah, so this is a very good book. And I, uh, once again, thank you to Cavalier Books for sending that through to, uh, to us to review. So, without further ado, do check the links in the description, all the YouTube stuff, our sponsors, our affiliates. Um, 
social media, Patreon, and click on those, it's all good. And once again, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.